Americans plagued by surging prices over the past 21 months are still feeling strains in their wallets. Consumer prices rose three-tenths of a percent last month, 3.4 percent over the prior year in April, a slight deceleration from March's 3.5 percent annual gain in prices. And the cost of everyday necessities are still relatively too high for consumers liking here. And one of those costs that keeps ticking higher is child care. The latest CPI print showing child care costs are up nearly 2% in the last year. For more on this, I'm joined by Tim Sheehan, who is the Greenlight co-founder and chief executive officer. Great to have you here with us. Let's dive into this real quick, Tim, as we think about what's contributing most to those child care costs. You know, I think it's because child care these days, there's so many things included in that, you know, not just maybe the agencies or, or someone uh, actually taking care of the child during work hours, but uh, there's so much more uh, that parents have to pay. Uh, if you look like just even a survey that Greenlight did last month, 76% uh, of parents uh, say they're very stressed about money. And interestingly, uh, also, three quarters of Gen Z teens are also stressed, feeling that stress about money. Um, I think it's just because it's cutting across a lot of the, the inflation is cutting across a lot of categories that hit families in particularly uh, hard, whether that be gas, groceries, clothing, uh, all of the categories you just mentioned. And so we're taking a look at some of the types of child care costs that we're keeping tabs on. but. There are a ton of ancillary costs within all of these as well, whether it be baby food or whether it be f uh, apparel for, for school or writing a check that uh, they give to the lunch in order to make sure that they're getting lunch That's at right. school. All of these things considered, it shows up in different ways here. Are there areas where it seems like in this childcare realm that there are starting to be some, some more concerted pushbacks on prices? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, families are, you know, they're doing the best they can. They're they're actually getting creative, you know, and trying to find ways to save money. Um, I think that it's it's great to see uh, the cases where parents are are kind of involving the kids in helping to save money. Um, you know, by hey, let's let's eat out a little less. Let's um, let's all take a bike ride to the grocery store or take the subway if you have one available to you. Um, try to save some money, but then also have kind of a, a benefit. Uh, like whether maybe it's the summer vacation. You know, so hey, we're going to take a family vacation this summer, but we need to save for it. Um, and so you kind of all are in the same boat together and you you are looking for ways to save money. And if you have a savings account kind of tied for that that goal, if it's a summer vacation, for example, you know, uh, make sure everybody in the family can see the balance and everybody can contribute to it. Um, something like Greenlight would would enable that. But that way, the kids can help the parents uh, with with it and actually be learning some things too along the way about budgeting and you know spending what you have living within your means uh wants versus needs there's a lot of good things that can come out of uh out of this kind of a difficult period of time where kids can really learn uh some some things that'll be quite helpful for them when when they're adults out on their own you know it's really interesting especially as we think about the family formation among millennials and how, what is anticipated there over these next few years particularly and that that could mean a boom as well in the number of children that are expected to be entered into the broader either child care services or educational front as well and and schooling all of these considered how do you think that will change where consumers are prioritizing certain elements of of education versus child care and, and the moderation that's expected there. Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I I wonder, you know, will will some people start to look at, you know, is it worth having both parents work, for example, given all of the expenses associated with uh, raising kids and taking care of kids? Um, will they will they come up with some creative solutions you know that's the thing about uh, americans is we will we will always creatively solve problems and so i i it'll be interesting to see what happens but i think you're right i think there will be some changes people will find ways to save money and 
Um, and if certain categories of expenses are too high, then, you know, people will look for alternatives. They'll look for other ways to to kind of, you know, meet their needs, um, even if it means kind of doing something less than they they used to. But maybe it's just become too expensive to to continue to buy that kind of thing or go to that kind of place. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, you're telling me to get all of my concert and experiential economy visits out now. Tim, I get it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Tim Sheehan, who is the Greenlight co-founder and chief executive officer. Appreciate the time. Thanks, Brad.